So today's lesson is to introduce IB Year 1 economics students to the internal assessment in IB economics. I want to give you some tips and hints on how to find a good article for your first IA, how to get started on writing that IA, and how to set yourself up for success on this very important part of your IB grade. First, I want to point out a couple reading materials that everybody working on their first economics IA should definitely pay attention to. And I think the most important document for you in beginning this process of your internal assessment is the IB Econ Guide itself. So make sure you have a copy of this document. If you don't have one from your teacher, simply Google it, IB Economics Guide. Go to page 88 and read here all about the purpose of the internal assessment in economics, the level of guidance that your teacher is expected to give you, what your responsibilities are, how much time should be spent on the IA, and so on. The requirements and recommendations are here, and the assessment criteria, which is very important for you. You need to know how you're going to be graded on this very important assignment. And that information can all be found right here in the IB Econ Guide. If you scroll down here, you'll see the actual criteria and the descriptors of the different grades that you can achieve in each of the criteria. So you need to become familiar with this criteria, guys. There are five criteria. There are diagrams. There is the use of terminology. There is application of economic theory to the article that you've chosen, the analysis, and the evaluation. And you should notice right away that criterion D and E, that's analysis and evaluation, together account for seven of the 14 marks on the, on the entire assessment. So become very familiar with these criteria, know what it is that you're expected to do, and as you begin writing and working on your final draft of this assignment, you should be very aware of how you're going to be graded. All right, the next important resource for you in writing your first internal assessment is your textbook. Now, if you're using the textbook authored by myself and Mr. Sean Maley, then you need to go to chapter 31 in the textbook and read this chapter before you start working on your internal assessment. You'll notice that this entire chapter is dedicated to succeeding on the internal assessment. So be sure you've read chapter 31 in your textbook. If you aren't using my textbook, then use whatever textbook you have. Certainly there is a chapter on how to write an effective economics IA. All right, once you familiarize yourself with the assessment itself, you know what the criteria are on which you'll be graded. The next step, of course, is to set yourself up for success by finding a good article. And for that, I recommend you use the Economics Classroom website, econclassroom.com. I have, obviously, lots of resources on the site, including all the video lessons that you could need to familiarize yourself with the economic theory needed to write a good IA. But a recent addition to the website is an entire section dedicated to economics news. So I want to point that out now. The first link that you might follow is the actual link from the top, the economics news link. If you click on this, you're going to be taken to what I call the economics universe or the Welker's Economics universe. This is an RSS page. Everything you see on this page are recent feeds from legitimate news sites relating to economics or business. Now not every article you're going to find here is going to be appropriate for an economics IA, but if you scroll through these headlines, you might get an idea of what's going on in the world of business and economics. So for example, right, right here from Time Magazine is a headline saying that manufacturers say they're already seeing a Trump bump. If I click on that headline, I can get an excerpt of the article or even the full article here. And I can read that article and determine whether it might be appropriate for an economics IA. Also notice that when you click on one headline from the home page, you see all the other recent headlines from that news source. This gives you the chance to scroll through lots of headlines on different topics if you don't know what topic it is that you wish to write about. Using this economics universe page gives you the chance to peruse lots of potential news sources that I've already filtered for you and determine whether there might be some recent articles from these sources that might be appropriate for your first economics commentary. Of course, you can use this for any of your IAs as well. You're going to end up writing three of these commentaries over your two years as an economics student. All right, well, what if you already have an idea of what topic you want to write about? If you know that you want to write about a particular topic, you can go use Google News. That's the second link here. 
Google News is a fantastic source. Of course, it's not going to put the best articles right in front of you. You have to search. Google is all about search. So let's say I'm writing a commentary in microeconomics and I'm a higher level student and I've been studying collusion in my class. I might do a search for collusion and find out what kind of articles there are about collusion in different industries right now. Unfortunately, most of the articles are about collusion between the Trump administration and Russia at this point, but there might be some recent articles relating to collusion here. Now, all you need to do is click on a headline. You've got the article. Read the article. Determine whether it's something you might want to write about. All right, finding articles is often the hardest part. If you get the wrong article, you're going to have a hard time writing an effective commentary later on. So make sure you spend the time you need to find the right article. Besides the Welker's Economics universe of RSS feeds and Google News, I've also provided links to lots of other legitimate news sources here that have already been chosen for you. So click on these. You can see the latest stories from lots of different news sources that I've already chosen for you. And when you find an article that you think might work, the next step is to begin analyzing that article. I want to show you how I have my students analyze articles, and this might be a good way for you to do the same. Now to do so, I've chosen an article that is actually too old for anybody to use today, but that's a good thing because I don't want any of you trying to uh, replicate what I'm demonstrating in this, in this lesson. So this is an article from last year, from 2016, about the lack of competition in the US airline market. I've read this article online. I think it's a good one for me to write a microeconomics commentary on. So the next thing I've done is I've copied and pasted the text of this article into my template. Now, if you're one of my students, you've been given a template via Google Classroom into which you can actually write your commentary. If you're not one of my students, my advice is create your own Google document or a Microsoft Word document. Put the cover page, all the, the contents that need to be included in the cover page on the first page. And on the second page, you need to paste the text of your article. You must do a little reformatting. If you paste a, an article from the internet, you're going to see lots of ads there. You're going to see lots of uh, links to other sites. Remove those hyperlinks, delete the ads, make the text look good. This is important. As an IB examiner, I definitely appreciate cleanliness and neatness on student work. So make it clean and neat before you complete your commentary. All right, I've chosen an article now. I've got a good article that I think is going to work for my microeconomics IA. The next thing I want to do is start commenting on that article before I ever write anything in my actual commentary itself. So the great thing about Google Docs is that it has this awesome commenting feature. If you start reading and you see something that you think relates to something you've studied, then you can highlight that text. Although the price of jet fuel, which makes up 30% of airlines costs, is down by more than half. Domestic airfares have barely budged. I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to do Control-Alt-M. That's the keyboard shortcut, Control-Alt-M. And I'm going to put a comment on that. Lower marginal costs in air travel have not caused prices to fall. That's just an observation I, I make. That's my interpretation of what I've just read. So that could come in handy when I start my written analysis of this article. The fuel prices are down, yet airfares have not fallen. So I'm going to continue reading. I'm going to highlight some more sections of this article. And when I'm done commenting on the article, I'm actually ready to begin writing my commentary. So let's do a quick read through and analysis of this article. I'm going to stop talking now and we'll fast forward as you see me comment on this article. I'm done commenting on my article. You can see I've added at least a dozen or so comments to different passages from this article. I've identified the fact that costs are falling for airlines and that there are four dominant firms indicating that this could be an oligopoly and that the four firms are experiencing higher profits thanks to lower fuel prices. There's also evidence from the article that there might be collusion between the firms in this market. Common ownership discourages competition is an is a observation I made. And that in Europe there seems to be more competition due to the lower barriers to entry and the fact that when fuel prices fall and profits are higher, more airlines enter the market reducing those profits. 
As a result, American carriers earn twice the amount of profit that European carriers do. In my mind, I'm already imagining the graphs that I can employ that I can employ to analyze this situation. Obviously, there is a collusive oligopoly situation in the United States in which the market acts almost like a monopoly, whereas in Europe, the increased competition means that profits are smaller and entry eliminates profits when they are experienced by the firms in that market. The chart here from The Economist gives me exactly the data I need to calculate the four firm concentration ratio ratio in the U.S. airline market. The four largest firms, according to this data, control about 68% of the U.S. market. In the paragraphs following the graph, I have some evidence of the entry barriers that actually reduce the level of competition in the U.S. market. There's evidence that at one airport in Philadelphia, a single airline has a near monopoly on that market. In conclusion, the article says that more rigorous regulation is needed to increase competition and benefit consumers in the U.S. airline market. So this article is obviously perfect for a microeconomics commentary analyzing the oligopolistic nature of the U.S. airline market and how potential collusion between these airlines is harming consumers compared to the more competitive European airline market. Notice that before I've written a single word of text in my commentary itself, I have commented extensively on the article. This is extremely important for students to do. It is reckless for you to begin writing your commentary without first having critically read the article, and I strongly recommend all students do that. So in this lesson, I've shown you the steps you need to take to set yourself up to write a successful internal assessment in IB economics. The first thing, of course, is to become very familiar with the assessment criteria and the nature of the internal assessment in IB Econ. That means studying all these pages from pages 88 to 93 in the Economics Curriculum Guide, which you can easily find with the Google search. Next, make sure you've read the chapter in your textbook, whether it's my textbook, that's the Welker Mailey book, or any other publisher's textbook about the internal assessment. Read that chapter carefully, familiarize yourself with the tips and hints for success on this important assessment. Next, find the article that you need to write a successful commentary. Go to econclassroom.com, follow the link to the economics news page where you can peruse headlines from the most recent publications. If you already have a topic in mind, turn to Google News. Google News is a great way to find an article on a topic that you already have in mind. If you want some legitimate sources for good articles, follow the links provided on econclassroom.com and you can see some of the headlines from the biggest economics and business news sources available on the web. If after this advice you're still struggling to write an effective commentary, you can always go to my website and sign up for Economics IA support. I've recently started offering this service to students. More information is available on the website. F simply follow the link to student services and teacher resources and you can read more about how I might be able to help you on your Economics IA. Thanks for watching guys and good luck on this very important assessment that makes up 20% of your IB grade in the economics class. Thank mm -hmm. you.